the slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement I Hey team, hope you're all doing well. Today's topic, I want to go over uh, a question that was recently asked by two of the athletes that I coach. They're, they're a married couple, uh, Matthew and Cindy, and they're both preparing for the California International Marathon. So I did want to provide some California International Marathon tips um, as I have had some experience with this particular race. And Matthew did uh, ask a great question. He said, I'd love to hear about any sim California International Marathon, specific strategies you might have. You know this course and have experienced these rollers during the first nine. How did you approach this? And he was talking about how uh, in, in previous races, he would go out a little bit too high going up the hills. Um, and he says, is this just the way it goes? Or is there an actual strategy to moving in a race without wasting energy? I think the most important thing going into any race and definitely in terms of uh, the California International Marathon, is really trust your training, uh, Matthew and Cindy. Um, you you have to know that going into this race, there is going to be times where you have some nerves, and that's okay to, to, to experience that and know that going in, that the what ifs, you, you know. But at the end of the day, uh, you have to trust what you're doing in terms of training and staying as relaxed as you can prior to the start of the race. And most importantly, in the race itself, consciously tell yourself to stay calm. Um, whatever you need to tell yourself just to remind yourself of what you've been doing in training, that you're that you're confident, that you're prepared, um, and, and monitor the amount of tension you're feeling uh, in your body too. If your shoulders start to rise, consciously tell yourself, "Relax, relax. I'm in control." Um, the California International Marathon is uh, a net downhill course, but in my opinion, it's not really. You can run fast on it. I mean, I set my personal best on it in 2007. I finished fourth place in as the top American that particular day. And I always tell runners too, it is important to to be much more conservative in the first half of of this race because there is a lot of rolling terrain. Uh, the first mile is practically downhill. There, I mean, it does flat. It, it, there's a about a 300 meter section that's flat at the very beginning and then it goes down for about 300 meters if I remember it right and you take a right hand turn and then again it just starts the course itself especially in the first half is mainly flat with with rolling hills okay and it pretty much stays that way um, up until about mile 16 or 17 and then it flattens out again and then again, there's more rolling hills. So you have a mixture of, of a lot of flat sections uh, on the California International Marathon, uh, a, along with a lot of rolling hills. They're not huge hills, but they're enough to, that you're going to be challenged in terms of um, your leg turnover. And, and because of those downhills, you have to also make sure that, uh, again, energy expenditure is, is key. Be conservative in the first half of this race. Even myself, man, I went out way too fast in 2007. I went out 107.09 through the first half. Okay, going into that race, and even today, my current personal best for the half marathon is 107.06. So I went out three seconds slower than my PR for the half marathon. But again, I was very well prepared for that race. I was well tapered, okay? I, I, I always tell runners, keep your intensity, keep your volume high up until 10 days out, okay? 10 days is plenty of time to really draw down your mileage um, and, and your intensity and allow your body time to recover. Um, in terms of how to deal with the rolling, rolling hills, again, uh, being, being conservative, uh, but if, if you catch yourself going out too fast in the race, okay, it just you have plenty of time to make up, okay? If you're going out way too fast, settle down into your pace. There are a lot of pace groups there at the California National Marathon. Um, so if I can share any California National Marathon tips for athletes, utilize those pace groups. Um, stay calm, stay relaxed. You know, even at the start of the, uh, you know, and I'll share, share some 
photos in this video of uh, that particular morning. I was with um, Lisa Rainsberger, was my coach at the time, uh, the 1985 Boston Marathon champion. Um, you know, in her own right, she was a 228 marathoner, won Chicago uh, twice, won Boston, won numerous other uh, marathons around the world, and a 52, 15, 10 miler. Uh, she was one of the fastest females in the world in her time. Um, and then also Emily Potter was my teammate uh, who ended up running 245 that morning and qualifying for the women's 2008 U.S. Olympic trials. Uh, she earned a 2008 U.S. Olympic trials qualifying standard that morning. Um, but we were relaxed. We were, uh, you know, cracking jokes and smiling and just enjoying the time uh, prior to the start of the race. And that's really important. You don't want to be too tense. It's, an, it's normal to have a little bit of, of nerves, but remember, everybody around you is going to be stressed out, and, and that's not your job. Okay, focus on your race. Um, let your competition stress out. Okay, going into this race, uh, Matthew, you, you and Cindy are doing great training. You're, the workouts you're doing really tell me that you are really progressing well. You're working on your speed. You're working on your endurance. You're staying consistent with your volume, and that's going to go a long way. Okay, um, you mentioned here in your message uh, you found yourself boxed in and wedged, uh, wedged a little bit in the race, and that kind of caused you to run a little bit too hot as you said uh, in the hills um, so is there an actual strategy to moving in a race without wasting energy uh, one of the strategies that I always tell runners and, and I've mentioned this in a lot of videos too and you want to do this at, at sim make sure you're running the tangents okay um, whatever turns coming up stay to the side of the road where the turns coming up okay run the least amount of distance as possible in the race okay if there's a left-hand turn coming up you want to be to the left-hand side of the road okay that being said if it's windy out it's better to run behind a group of runners in the middle of the road rather than running to the far left of the road by yourself and handling dealing with all the 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 wind um, and conditions okay if it's windy and it may be raining which is not more than likely you're not going to experience that in California in Sacramento um, I think it's a smarter move to do everything you can in the race to conserve energy uh, and run with that group. Utilize that group. I was very fortunate in 2007 because I had I was running with the lead Kenyans up until 21 miles of that race. So I had a big group of runners um, almost the entire way. Okay, that helped a ton. So make sure that you're um, you're using the the athletes around you and work with those athletes. Okay. But also don't put all the stress on yourself, okay? If, and as I mentioned, if for whatever reason, if it is windy, stay behind that group and, and minimize the um, energy expenditure that you're going to have to deal with if you are running by yourself uh, and, and not behind a group, okay? But also keep in mind those tangents, okay? It's important because, again, you want to run the least amount of distance. You want to work the least amount as you can in the race versus your competition. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Make sure that you are drinking in the race. Don't pass up aid stations. Even if you have to stop for a few seconds to grab some cups and drink and not sip, that is absolutely vital. I mean, I had a um, one of my supporters left a, a message on one of my videos the other day, and he was saying that, I really wish I would have saw your video because uh, I kept grabbing, I would grab a cup, run by the station, and most of it fell out. Most of the contents fell out. I wish I would have just stopped for a few seconds and drank, you know, a couple cups, two to three cups down rather than just grabbing a cup and losing the majority of the contents, okay? This is a long race, so whether you're running California National Marathon or you're running Chicago or you're running... Uh, Valencia or another marathon around the world, make sure that you get in the habit in the uh, in training first of drinking rather than sipping, okay? If you do that, your chances of success in the marathon are going to rise, okay? Um, other California National Marathon tips, I would, I would make sure to are eating your breakfast three hours before the start of your race. You want to make sure you, you get rid of that waste um, prior to the start of the race and not have to deal with that in the race itself, 
Okay, so make sure you're eating your breakfast three hours, not two hours before the start of the race. Two hours minimum, preferably three hours. Okay, um, what are some other things about California International Marathon? You, you start the start of the race starts promptly at 7 a.m. Um, near Folsom Dam, and then it ends at the uh, state capitol in downtown Sacramento. Beautiful course, great competition. Um, and it's gotten even more competitive now. I mean, I was fourth there in 2007 with 219.35. Now, if I ran 219.35 now there, I would probably get maybe top 20, maybe, because they, it just keeps getting more competitive and, and runners continue to run faster. Um, obviously, the shoe technology has is just went nuts since 2007. I mean, I was wearing 3K, 5K uh, racing flats in that race and we didn't have those types of shoes but again what types of shoes you're wearing isn't a guarantee that you're going to run fast it's the preparation it's the hard work you're putting in day in day out and the shoes can only take you so far okay every runner you know i hear so many comments about well it was the super shoes that made the runner run so fast no that's not the case those shoes can only put can only give you so much of an advantage maybe two or three minutes but at the end of the day if you haven't put in the heavy work, if you haven't trained well below goal race pace, if you haven't done your speed sessions, if you haven't done your long runs and been consistent with those long runs, those so-called super shoes aren't going to do anything for you, okay? Um, what are some other things I can help uh, that'll just, again, um, make sure you're taking in your gels. Um, try to do, try to take three to four gels in the race. Um, they will hand a, a gel out probably around mile 17 or 18 if I remember too, because that in most cases where runners run very low on glycogen. And at any given time, we only have about 1,700 to 1,800 calories of glycogen stored in the liver. And so that's why they, they, they hand that, those gels out right around mile 17 or 18. So you want to start carbo-loading the week the entire week leading into the California International Marathon. That's probably one of the most important California International Marathon tips I can share too. You wanna to make sure you're stocked up on glycogen, okay? You don't have to hit a wall. I did not hit a wall in 2007. Even at the 2011 Monumental Indianapolis Marathon, I took fifth in 226.42, including a bathroom break. I had to jump in a porta john because again, I ate my breakfast about an hour and a half prior to the start of the race. Bad mistake. I should have ate three hours prior to the start. So make sure you, that's why I share that with runners. You you know, I lost probably two or three minutes off my finish time that morning. And and then again, I was I jumped out of the board, John, and then had to chase back the, the lead group. I spent the entire rest of the race uh, chasing that group. So make sure you're doing that. Um, but again, pre-plan, make sure you have all of your, um, your gear set out the, the night before. Um, energy conservation, as I mentioned, um, and, and taking in gels, taking in three to four gels in the race. Do your best to be a little bit more conservative in the first half, okay? You can still run a PR, running a positive split. I did in 2007, and other runners go out a little too aggressive in the first half. But again, if the training is there, and you both are doing very well, if the training is there, you've tapered correctly, okay? And you haven't started dropping your volume and intensity three weeks out. In most cases, a lot of runners do that, and a lot of runners still do set PRs with three-week tapers. So I'm not, you know, dissing three-week tapers, but um, I've just found that in most cases, uh, runners do very well. And my runners and athletes that have um, invested in themselves and gotten themselves as a training plan, um, they they do that 10-day taper, and they feel a little bit more strong in the race um, than dropping intensity and volume too far out. You want to continue to remind yourself of what you're training them to do. Um, you can still keep your volume high uh, in terms of your long run up high up until um, 14 days out, but just lessen some of the, uh, the the workouts in terms of the volume in the workouts. Okay, um, so it's natural to do your last long run uh, a week out before the before the sim marathon at maybe between 12 and 14 miles, or up even up to around 15 miles. Um, so. That's something to keep in mind. But in terms of the course itself, uh, it is flat to rolling sections. There, There's a really sharp downhill at the 10 mile mark. Right as you pass the 10 mile mark, um, you'll take a right-hand turn 
and you'll notice a downhill section that goes downhill for about uh, 200 to 250 meters, real sharp downhill, and then it flattens out, and then again it's back to rolling hills and flat sections. Um, but the two sections of the course that are that have a, a great deal of downhill, like really sharp downhill, is the first mile. So be very conservative there. It's you know go out 10 to 20, 15 seconds slower than goal race pace the first four to five miles. That's what I would recommend in terms of California International Marathon tips. First four to around five miles. Um, if you're planning to say 750 pace, that first four to five miles should be like 810, 815 to 810 mile pace. Okay, just to be a little bit more conservative and then start settling in into your pace. Or as, as I mentioned before, utilize those pace groups. Okay, they'll start off right at the pace, right around the pace that you're aiming for. So stick with that pace. And if you're feeling really good, focus on really start racing at the in the 10k at the 20 mile mark okay there's two parts of the marathon the first 20 miles and really the race doesn't start until the 20 mile mark okay the 20 miles is the first warm up and then the last 10k is really the race okay that's really where you want to start focusing in on that so Matthew I hope this video is helpful for you in terms of sharing with you some California International Marathon tips um, hopefully I've answered and addressed some of the questions that you had um, if you or anyone else has any other um, questions regarding uh, tapering or, or marathon training, feel free to leave me a comment below. I will definitely respond back to you. Um, and if you've run the California International Marathon, please leave uh, your thoughts below for, for Matthew and, and Cindy as well, just to share with them as well some of your experiences of the California International Marathon, uh, maybe some other things that I didn't address in this video that will help them as well leading into their marathon. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you're wanting to take your training and racing to the next level, feel free to check out the resources below these videos or on RunDreamAchieve.com, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.